Hi there, Steve Kaufman here again to talk about language. And, you know, I've been thinking about a number of things and language and people and life. And I want to do a series of videos where I talk about sort of the human side of language, how important language is to our being. And so I'm going to talk about language and travel. I'm going to talk about language and history because history is a big part of my interest in language learning. I'm going to talk about chat GPT and the role of the teacher in the classroom. And I'm going to talk about uh, Elon Musk's Neuralink. And I'm going to do this in four separate videos. But today I'm going to talk about travel. One of the reasons is that I'm going to be traveling. I'm going to be in uh, Denmark from the 6th, 17th to the 19th of May, Southern Sweden, the 21st, 22nd or so, Stockholm, 24th, 25th, and then I'm going to be in Poland for a week, sort of 26th, 7th through the 2nd of June, 1st of June. So it would be great if we could, uh, if I could meet some of my uh, viewers there, we could talk about our interests and our enthusiasm, hopefully for language learning. Travel is kind of interesting when it comes to language learning because, first of all, language learning is a form of travel. So every time I've learned a language, I've explored other countries. Uh, I may not be in those countries, but I go there in a way. I get interested in the countries. I look up the map of the countries. I look up pictures. I get into the history of a country. Uh, it's a form of traveling. You're, you're traveling Although you're staying at home, you're traveling to another world, another world in time, another world in place. So language learning is in itself a form of travel, in my opinion. Second thing about travel is the idea that you might travel to the country. Having that as a goal is a tremendous motivator. Uh, now, for example, I'm going to be in Denmark and Poland. So I, I went and bought some audiobooks and ebooks. I'm going through a history of Denmark right now. At some point, I'm going to switch over to Polish. I'm not going to be fluent when I get to Denmark or Poland, but I'll have a much better understanding of the language. I'll be able to understand things that are happening around me. I will try to speak. Um, it's going to be difficult, but I don't mind. But having this level of understanding is going to make it more comfortable for me to be in the language to be in the country where the language is spoken. Also, just listening to the audiobook and reading this book on Danish history is again, as I said, a form of travel, uh, traveling in the language. And of course, the third thing about travel is, as many people point out, you know, if you can be in the country where the language is spoken, that's the ultimate learning environment, assuming that you have a good enough level in the language so that you can take advantage. People are often disappointed, and it has happened to me, that you go to the country. I mean, I can think back to the first time I went to Portugal. I put a fair amount of effort into learning Portuguese, and I had Spanish, and my Portuguese is not very good. But everyone that I tried to speak to spoke to me in English. Uh, so I was unsuccessful. But then I went back again and studied some more Portuguese. We, my wife and I went to Portugal a second time, and I was able to speak to people in Portuguese. So I often mention this, it's important to get your language up to a level where it's good enough that people will actually speak to you in that language. And don't get discouraged if people answer you in English, because random people in stores or on the street, they are not your teachers. And uh, if they feel that their English is a more efficient way of communicating, then that's what they will in many cases use, even though you would like them to humor you in the language that you are learning. So, but still, even if you go there as I did in Portuguese and I failed, I was unable to really find many opportunities to use Portuguese and probably my Portuguese was not very good despite the effort I had put in. Nevertheless, I came away saying, geez, I better improve my Portuguese so that when I go again, I'll do better. So to summarize, you know, travel, Language learning itself is a form of travel, traveling in time and space and language space. Uh, language learning can be a goal, a motivating goal for learning a language. You're planning to go to Mexico, you're planning to go to China, you're planning to go to Germany, Japan, so you're going to work very hard on the language. 
And third of all, when you are there, it can be an opportunity to use the language and to improve in the language. It may be difficult if your language isn't up to the level that is needed in order for people to want to communicate with you in the language, but then that should be additional motivation to improve. So for all of those reasons, travel to me is a big part of language learning. I've, I'm sure that many of you have had similar experiences. Thank you for listening. Bye for now.